Hi everybody. Today I'm going to talk about what I think are the two biggest reasons why there are thousands of these Cube 3 printers that have been put in closets or or even put out on eBay, sold for parts or as is. Um, just for the record, I am a huge fan of this printer. Um, it is, uh, in my opinion, probably, it, it's the best quality printer I own. I own quite a few printers. Um, although I had a, although I had a little bumpy history with this printer also, I wrestled with a couple of issues um, that I think most users, or most owners of this printer probably ran into, uh, led to frustration, and they got tossed in the closet. So, if you've got one of these that's sitting in a closet, uh, I'm going to tell you what to do to get this thing printing uh, again very quickly. There are two primary issues that I think impact people. If you've just purchased one of these and you need some help, uh, this, th th this, will, this will go a long way for you also. But, um, you, you, you know, issue number one with these printers is that they ship with two PLA cartridges and it's a closed source system uh, but it, it, it's there is no reason um, for you to even use uh, you don't have to purchase their cartridges anymore really you can't find them people who own these uh, and and know what they're capable of have have snatched up all of the remaining new cartridges uh, quite a while ago I think there was a um, there was a printer company in California that had probably snatched up the last of these from 3D Systems and they were selling four of these for $80. And, and I know quite a few people, including myself, that snatched up some because, you know, the, the cartridges, you, you can do so much with them. It, the filament, uh, the ABS filament they were selling in them was doesn't expire. Uh, it's, it's good still. Um, but these shipped with two PLA cartridges and uh, PLA... Uh, it gets brittle over time. It's made out of corn. You can actually compost PLA. You can throw a PLA part. This is PLA. If I threw that in a composter, uh, this would break down. Um, so people get these. Sometimes they pay. They paid outrageous amounts for new PLA cartridges. They pulled them out of the mylar. They they hooked them up. They fired them up. And they were lucky to get a couple prints before, the, the, what you know, something happened and they couldn't print. So you'll see a lot of people complain. I bought the printer, uh, and I, I was never able to get a single print. I purge, I uh, I do everything I can, and nothing ever comes out of the tip. And it, the most likely suspect for that is the old PLA. So once once the PLA, it's bound and feed. Right, so this is where the, the feed motor is. Once the PLA breaks anywhere along this path, it's it. The energy from the motor will not transfer. And uh, if you're lucky when you purge or you try to print, you'll get, you'll get little drops of filament and that's really it. And you'll find some videos that show you how to pull all this apart and rip out the, the broken PLA and put it all back together. If you just try to use that same PLA, you're going to run into the same issue again. So even people that have, you know, quote unquote, unclogged their Q3 cartridges um, got frustrated and tossed them into the closet. So <clears throat> my recommendation is pull it out, pull the cartridge apart. Uh, it, it's not too hard to do. You'll find some videos. Or you can probably figure it out toss the PLA that's inside of it out. Get some retail PLA. Um, this is the case. You can cut a, a small hole that will allow you to feed. Just retail PLA and, uh, and you're off to the races again. You're going to get limited mileage out of that. This entire assembly here is all, if, if you look at it closely, it's all reinforcement for this feed tube all of this stuff that's on here simply reinforces supports this feed tube which is 
you, you'll recognize this if you pull the cartridge apart. This is the, the tube inside of the cartridge that keeps it from tangling as it goes to the feed motor. This is simply 2.8 OD by two millimeter inner diameter. Um, so if you punch a hole uh, so that you can reuse, simply reuse the cartridge as is, uh, you're going to get limited mileage because this tube will stretch uh, every time you print with it. Eventually, eventually uh, it will stretch inside of the print head so much that it can't move anymore and then it will begin pressing um, against these little tabs here that hold it in place and eventually what you'll find these are these aren't very strong every time you print you'll see this begin to stretch more and more it will pull uh, th so so that will fail you'll get maybe four or five kilograms of prints out of it um, before it does I'm gonna make another video uh, offering up some advice, some do's, some don'ts, some tools to use if you're going to open source, uh, do your own open source. There's some great options out there. Uh, you, you can even purchase purchase stuff from people. You can go out to print 3 form. I'm sure they have some great options. People will help you out uh, for very little money. They'll reprogram your chips for free. Uh, definitely go out there and, and do some research if you're going to do that. The second thing that probably caused frustration is this, the auto Z gap. Now, this printer is very good at auto leveling, uh, usually on the money once it tells you uh, what to change. Uh, but the auto Z gap, because it's based the I beam, it only measures from the I beam to the plate. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take into account how long, how much that print tip can stick out of the bottom. And unfortunately, 3D systems um, didn't have a very good way of making those very consistent. Uh, so I recommend not even using Auto Z Gap, or at least, at the very least, validating, right? So when it's, make sure the print tip's clean. When it does the Auto Z Gap, run the print gauge underneath. It's, if you're lucky, you're gonna feel it drag just a little bit on this, great. I recommend, even if even if you think it's good, write down that number, do a test print. Uh, and if, it's, if it squishes a little bit, go through that process again, but tell it you want to adjust and extend the distance between uh, the print head assembly and the plate. If that first layer it, um, isn't, isn't close enough, so if, if it if it uh, if it pulls up or you see it lift, um, then you want to tighten it up a little bit. And and I would say 0.5, 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters is all you're going to want to do. M move it a little bit, test print. Uh, within three or four adjustments, you're going to have the perfect Z gap. And I would write it down. I actually change. Uh, I didn't do it on this one. I actually changed the printer name. I, I have about nine of these. I changed the printer name to what the Z gap is on that device after I'm done testing, uh, so that you know when I, when I if I sell it to somebody or, or or if I pull it out for for another reason, I already know what it is right off the bat. Um, so listen, this is a great printer. There are tons of open source utilities available for this. Great designs for the cartridges. Uh, the chips can be reprogrammed, the print files themselves, the encryption used on those has been, has been broken. The encryption used on the firmware has been broken. There's modified firmware for not only the Cube 3, but the Echo Cycle. And the Echo Cycle prints PETG. So if you've watched, if you're one of the four people, right, that have watched one of my other videos, I said, hey, you can change out the firmware very, very easily on these Echo Cycle, but there's no modified firmware, so you're gonna have to get a programmer. That's no longer the case. Uh, there is now modified Echo Cycle firmware. So this is OEM Red Echo Cycle PETG. This is retail transparent Echo Cycle, uh, and I'm I'm very happy with uh, the results. You'll see it's gonna be a little bit harder to see on the transparent. So I'll show you the red. 
Um, the bridging, really, really happy with the bridging. And this is with the OEM slicer. I did not do any post-processing to this Benchy, you know, at all. And you'll see, you'll see a loop at the top of these, of these curves. Um, I don't think you're going to be able to see inside here. But even the, the roof, the bridging, very impressed with the bridging. Uh, this is two color. Really happy with how that came out. I did just a little bit of post-processing on this. Something happened over here. There were some pieces of filament hanging out, but another great option. This will do PLA, ABS, uh, with just regular Cube 3 firmware. You can add in what they call Infinity Rinse Away, which is just PVA. So you can do PLA prints that have melt away support material. You throw it in some warm water uh, and about an hour later, it, it's all gone and, and you have, uh, you have uh, very hard to print stuff completed. Uh, or you can switch the firmware over to EchoCycle. And if, somebody, if you wanna do that, somebody can help you reprogram the chips. That's very easy. They'll probably do it for free or next to nothing. Uh, and then you can do PETG. And PETG, it's a, it's a high temp filament that is almost as warp friendly as PLA. Uh, I I did both of these. I did all three of these with just um, Elmer's purple. Something really big, and I do the same with PLA. I would use the cube glue, which is which is best. It doesn't have a heated bed, but look, great printer. Do some research out on print3dforum.com. I'm gonna put another video out about showing some pointers and some some some, some tools that I used uh, coming up with with some of the open source conversions for the cartridges that I've done um, and so check that out but uh, please if you have any questions leave a comment find me on print 3d forum I uh, I'm just a member there uh, but you, you should be able to track me down fairly easily you see I reply to posts very commonly um, thanks everybody good luck